Hello, um, my name is Joel Backus, and I'm going to talk to you now um, on the topic of how the biodynamic preparations um, improve the nutritional quality of our food. Um, now, I came across um, organic farming and biodynamics about 30 years ago when I literally hadn't even heard of organics at all. I was always a keen garden, but I did it just conventionally, throwing on any old fertilizer or sprays or whatever, and never thinking about it. And I was actually working um, as a policy analyst in the Ministry of Agriculture, and the government of the day decided they should have a policy on organic farming. And I was just randomly given the job of reading public sub submissions that were invited um, and making a summary of them so that they could make their policy on organic farming. And I started to read these and, oh, um, they were written with such passion and conviction. And, oh, I thought, this is really something amazing. And so after that, I started to go woofing and, and find out for myself, actually, what it all involved. And it was interesting that just the places that I went to, it just so happened that the places that did, uh, I mean, it was all good, and the organic places were, were, were great, but the ones that did biodynamics somehow had that little bit extra. They seemed, somehow seemed to be all together more and, and sort of achieving things a bit more easily. And so that's what I got interested in. And then I looked a bit further and, and learned a bit about what it does. Um, but then I thought, well, you know, all this business of making all these complicated preparations and, 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 um, and then all the business about stirring them and putting them on the land. I'm a very impatient person and, you know, um, realistically and, and thinking about the farmers who are really busy, the dairy farmers, how are they ever going to find time to do this? And the gardeners, market gardeners are busy all day. How are they going to fit it in? You know, is this really necessary? And um, then um, I actually started to read uh, these lectures that were spoken about, uh, the lectures that Rudolf Steiner gave to farmers um, about biodynamics. And there was a very interesting uh, introduction to these lectures in the book I read. Um, and it was when, um, a scientist who worked with Rudolf Steiner, um, his name was Einfried Pfeiffer, um, he uh, asked Steiner why it was that people seemed to be enthusiastic about all these things, but actually they didn't really get it all together and, 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 and they didn't actually achieve all that much very often, even with the best intentions. And he said, why is that? And Steiner said, well, it's because of the food they eat. The, the food no longer actually right the food no longer contains the um, the forces to give people strength to translate what they think they would like to do into actual action and and, and, and to do it and I thought well that sounds pretty important so since then I've been on a journey trying to understand well what does he mean what are these forces what are these formative forces he's been talking about and and why are they so important for our nutrition? Um, so, so I, I looked into this whole question of nutritional quality and I ended up doing a, a sort of Masters of Science about it, trying to understand it, because a lot of people have tried, a lot of scientists have done research trying to show that um, organic and biodynamic food has better nutritional quality than, um, than the conventional food. But actually, when you look through all these different tests and things that people have done, um, and people have done that, they've compared different tests, people have done different ways, there's actually very, some of them show advantages and some of them don't particularly, and it's not very conclusive. So the scientists say, oh no, it's just people's imagination. But I don't think it's people's imagination. Um, lots of people say, and I find myself, that actually if you really eat organic and better biodynamic food, it seems more satisfying and you definitely feel 
better from it. Um, so, so what is this? And then I thought, well, actually, are they measuring the right thing in, in looking at the quality of food? Now, what, what a scientist does when, when they want to uh, measure the quality of a food, they take, say, a, a carrot or something, they um, put it in a very hot oven, reduce it to an ash, and then they do a whole lot of chemical tests on it, and it's got so much, so many grams of calcium, so much potassium, whatever, and, and, and they measure the amount of calories it's got in, um, and, and maybe the vitamins sometimes. Um, but the whole point that, that Steiner made um, about our food is that it needs to be alive. And this is why processed food just doesn't, doesn't do it, because it's all these um, plants and, and animals and things that are, are alive. And there's a lot of difference between something that's alive and something that's not, like this table. And when we eat something, I think a lot of this, the traditional thinking about nutrition, it's almost like um, measuring the quality, it's sort of like measuring the quality of petrol that you put in a car. But if you, if you analyze its constituents, um, you can then tell the quality and so it'll make the car go better. But the question is, are people actually like cars? And the answer is, no, well, <laughs> cars are just machines and people are alive. And that's a huge difference. And if you look into this whole question of what it means to be alive and you can move around and you can smell and you can taste and, and, and you grow. Um, so, so then it means that you need a different sort of measure for how, um, for how, the, how your food should be. Um, losing myself. Um, so the question is, think about what, what you're looking for in food. Are you looking for a certain number of, of different elements, sort of calcium or whatever? Um, I think more and more these days people look for something that actually tastes nice. Um, there's a lot of difference, but in particularly in sort of fruit and vegetables and things that a lot of the conventionally grown vegetables don't actually even taste particularly good. <laughs> um, and and the other thing is that often we think, well, it, it should be con contributing to our health. Um, and so. Then you think, well, how can we how can we measure whether we can we can contribute to our health? And people have tried. It's pretty hard because we're not like rats that you can put in a cage and, and just feed them a particular diet and see what happens. Um, but there have been two studies in Europe were particularly interesting. One was they looked at a whole uh, they sort of monitored the health of um, children in different schools. I think it was in Sweden, and they looked particularly at, there was a lot of children with skin problems like eczema. Um, and they found that there were several of the schools that, that were just state schools and there was a Steiner school where generally the parents sort of uh, had better lifestyles and were looking for organic food. And, and, and the interesting thing that they found there was that those children had far less eczema and skin allergies and whatever than the children in the other school. So it's just, it, that was just an indication. Then there was somebody else who um, took um, a convent with nuns in, in, in Germany <coughs> and they, uh, they monitored their health for a bit. And those nuns all ate from the same kitchen and the kitchen was just producing fairly ordinary sort of food. Then they switched in the kitchen to only um, feeding, only using biodynamic food. And they measured a whole lot of things like the um, nuns' heart rates, blood pressure and whatever. And it was, this was only done for a few weeks, but they definitely found actual differences in, the, um, in their blood pressure and, and you know, it was a scientifically um, 
profound thing. But um, and the, the nuns, you know, they asked the nuns sort of how they felt and thought and things, and they, the nuns said yes, they definitely felt felt better, um, and they could think better, and they could pray better uh, when they were on the biodynamic food. But um, so then coming round to this whole question of, of what the biodynamic preparations are doing and why, even though organic food is really good, why the biodynamic food might give you something a little bit more. Um, and you come, I come back to this statement that Rudolf Steiner made when he was asked about this, why, why he thought the... Um, well, he, somebody asked him why people, why people who um, couldn't, yeah, couldn't get it all together and actually achieve things, um, and he said it's a matter of the food, and that the food was not giving them the strength they needed to move from, to, you know, put their thoughts into action. Um, and he said the food needs to be as alive as possible, um, and to be as live as possible, it needs to have these strong formative forces, which Sue talked about this morning, um, which these biodynamic preparations enhance. Now, so when we're growing uh, our food crops organically, you're um, really increasing the fertility of your soil with using good rotations and putting on good composts um, and you're building up the, the soil biology and, and, and really focusing on, on really good fertile soil to build a good plant. But what the biodynamic people also focus on what's coming in from um, the moon and the sun and the planets and the stars because that is where these formative forces that he talked about are coming from. Um, not to mention, of course, just that I'm in the sunlight. Sunlight is important. The, the sunlight brings in a lot of these formative forces. Um, now, the difficulty for a lot of people with thinking about this, we say, oh, well, this is the, the sort of spiritual background of, of biodynamics and, and that immediately puts people off a bit because they think of some sort of religious connotation. But what Steiner was meaning by the spiritual, I think, was that it's something that you can't see, you can't measure, you can't smell or taste very easily. Um, it, it, it's something... And so this is all that it is, that, 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 that this is what we're talking about. Um, now, these, I see these formative forces, and I've been struggling to understand what they are for quite a few years, um, because we can't see them or measure them or, or, or whatever, but they're energies. Um, the modern scientists now are realising that, that uh, the world around us, the things in the world, are not quite what they seem. There's all this new science of the quantum scientists, uh, quantum mechanics and whatever, and they've actually shown that actually even though this table looks pretty solid, it's still mostly actual space. There's these, <laughs> if you can visualise it, there's, there's sort of little atoms and things, and, and it, it, it appears solid to us, but actually it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's mostly space. <laughs> Um, and, and, and the same with anything else. That, um, so things aren't necessarily quite what they seem, is, is, is really what people are finding out. Uh, there's a biologist, uh, Rupert Sheldrake, I think, I don't know if anyone can come across him, and he talked about, he, he sort of really studied how plants grow and, and, and what's sort of special about them and being alive, and he said they seem to be getting these messages of how they should be and how they should grow. And it isn't all from the genes, uh, which a lot of people think. But it, it's sort of in the air all around them that, that there's this message. You see, how does a carrot know how to be a carrot? And you, a lot of people say it's just in the genes, but it's more than that. This carrot is, is related to some of these uh, stars out there. Um, 
that have the that somehow tell it to produce this particular form, which is quite it's different from a beetroot, which is another, and very different from a tomato or a lettuce. Um, and that is, and, and then, but then carrots can vary quite a bit in their size and shape and because these formative forces that are coming in are modified by um, the planets moving around. Um, I think the important point about understanding life and understanding biodynamics and things is this whole thing that um, everything's moving. As you said, the, the planets are always moving around. They're always in different relationships to themselves and to the plant. And they're giving different, sort of, different messages down to the earth, down to our bodies and to, to anything that's growing. Um, and so... When they when they do this, they they're helping to um, set allow a tomato to be a tomato and beetroot to be a beetroot, and and for us each of us is like the carrots are all a sort of species, but each human being is sort of like its own species. All of us are different. We've all um, each one of us has got unique DNA. That that's why you can. You can do a DNA test and, and tell who's the criminal or <laughs> whatever. We've each got <coughs> quite unique bodies and we each work in a different way. Um, and so we, when we eat, if we're eating living food, it's a question not so much of just eating a whole bunch of minerals and whatever. We're eating something that's living that then relates to our body. And... The strange thing that I took for years about to understand was that Rudolf Steiner said that the whole point, a lot of the point of nutrition is that you're eating the formative forces that have made a carrot and your, um, and your digestion has to sort of kill those formative forces because you don't want to be a carrot, you want to be you. And, and, and so you... you, you kill that and that's what your digestion is doing and and then you turn turn the, the energies the, these special formative energies that are in it you use that to build up your own digestion your organs your gut bacteria your um, but it, it's not just your physical body that you're feeding because all of us we're, we're physical body but we're, we also all have souls and spirits I think most people think that way these days. And the important thing about, about this food is that it's, it's feeding your soul and spirit. Now, the people who are doing lots of research on gut bacteria at the moment, they find, they're sort of finding this amazing thing how um, the gut bacteria you have depends on what you're eating. And the more diversity of things, and particularly living things, the better a lot of gut bacteria you have. And that, in turn, they affect your thinking, the way you can think, um, your whole mood, your emotions, um, and, and what you can do in life. So, um, so this is why the, the formative forces are so important. Um, and so, and people have done tests on this. <coughs> They've um, th there is a way of showing these formative forces, which some scientists in Europe have sort of perfected. There's this method called um, sensitive crystallization, where you um, you get a plant sap, or you can do it on human blood or anything. Um, you you make a, a, a solution, you dissolve it in water, put in some copper chloride salt, and then you put it in a small dish, and you have to leave it in a very still environment just to sort of settle out and, and form crystals. And this, this is why it's a bit hard to do this in New Zealand, because uh, New Zealand isn't, isn't a very still env <laughs> environment. But, um, and you... I'll show you though these afterwards, but you get these amazing pictures. And 
you get a different picture, picture for each different vegetable. You can tell from these pictures if a person's blood is what, you know, healthy or, or not, or their urine. Um, these pictures, you can't, I'll show you, you handed it around afterwards, were, were of fruit juice that um, they wanted to test what difference it made keeping, keeping it in the fridge for a few days or freezing it, um, what difference it made. And the, the first picture of the, is this fruit juice just when it was freshly squeezed. The next one is when it was, uh, it had been in the fridge for several days and the last one had been um, frozen. And when you have a look at this, you'll see that the first one, it, it's a very harmonious uh, pattern. It's all together. The next one, it's sort of starting to fall apart a bit. And then the following one, it, it's not. And this is what these form, formative forces are doing. They're holding you all together. They're keeping your organs working properly. Each organ has to work um, as a whole. They're they're keeping everything in harmony within you and just like in a vegetable it needs to be in a harmony it's combining a particular lot of formative forces so that it all works together in a harmony um, so uh, now we what are we doing come to the uh, what the biodynamic pressure preparations are doing they're actually um, helping to bring to strengthen the formative forces um, make the plants more sensitive to, to the air above and, and help, help the, make the soil more vibrant, more alive, more dynamic. Um, and you can, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about the different uh, preparations and, and, and what they do. So basically the um, preparation 500 um, and the two, two of the compost preparations, the um, uh, yarrow, the 502, and the um, chamomile, the preparation 503, which is part of some two of the compost preparations, they're particularly good at stimulating the formative forces in the soil so that the plant is better able to <coughs> take up good nutrition and, and good more minerals as well as it goes. Um, and then the, um, the nettle preparation, the preparation 504, um, particularly helps plants to make good protein. Now, this is, I don't think I've got time to go in this now, but making good protein is another important point that these preparations do help you to uh, make, make good protein, which I think Peter was talking about just now, that it, that, that our food is generally lacking in this good protein. Um, and so for vegetarians or anyone, it, it is particularly important that, 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 the, um, that, your, that your food is, is giving you what you need. Um, and the preparation 501, the horn silica, um, and to some extent, um, the dandelion preparation too. They are stimulating, as Sue said, the, the light energy that's coming into the plants. And this is something that's particularly lacking. This person I talked about before, this Anfred Pfeiffer, I once listened to a tape of him and he, he'd studied all this sort of much of his life. And he said, the problem behind a lot of the health issues we have today, well, he was talking quite a little while ago, but it happened, it's, it's uh, even more relevant today, is actually a light, lack of light in our food. And this light energy, which a lot comes from the sunlight, but it's also more than that, um, is what stimulates what Steiner calls our inner light. And that is our whole sort of nervous system, our sort of soul and spirit that the, how we operate, how, how we feel, um, and you know, you just look around. There's so many people with depression. What you know, maybe they they they're suffering from from lack of light. Um, and it seems strange when we've got you know plenty of sunlight coming, but it it is just somehow not doing it. Um, so 
this is why, I mean, lots of people do biodynamics and they, and they get as far as putting on the, um, uh, the compost, you know, using the compost preparations and putting on the 500, but then a lot of them sort of give up after that and they don't use this preparation 501, which is particularly important from this point of view for our nutrition. So, um, and this is particularly important, I feel, for, for young children. And young children are often not getting the right, their, their right nutrition. Uh, a lot of mothers have battles with children to eat their vegetables at all. And when you think about it, actually it's no wonder because most of the vegetables that the children are fed uh, come from the supermarket. They might be quite a few days old. They might have been kept in the fridge for several days. They probably didn't even start off particularly good because they were the, the large-scale market gardeners who supply the, um, the supermarkets. Um, in order to make a profit, because the, you know the prices are all kept down, they have to grow big plants as quickly as possible. That, that, that's the reality for them. But this great big juicy looking plant actually is mostly water. It hasn't had time to, to take in the sunlight and convert the nitrogen. They often grow with a lot of nitrogen and it, the plant has to convert this nitrogen into protein and the building blocks of the protein are amino acids. But um, the plant hasn't been able to do that uh, sufficiently, so you, you're getting a poor quality. And it's the um, protein in a plant particularly that gives it a good taste and, and all the more complex nutrients that it builds up with, with the help of sunlight. It's, it's, it's actually building up um, a lot more you know, special oils in the plant, uh, you've probably heard of the omega-6 omega and omega-3s and things, and, and particularly uh, getting alive with uh, vitamins, antioxidants. Um, that's what a lot of those vegetables are, are sort of lacking a bit, so it's actually no wonder that, that children say that. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> I think that's, I think I better end there, but, but I probably had my time.